Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, humble human on a mission here to help you achieve and receive the best hair, skin, nails of your life, slow aging, and look and feel your best, all with this radiance angle, this non-toxic oxidative stress reduction approach to develop a higher level of radiance, deeper beauty, lasting beauty, better relationships, the list goes on. We have a very exciting guest joining us today, a guest as well as a longtime client, Jamie Jamgoshen. Really excited to have her here. She's a bit of a celebrity if you've never heard of her. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. We're going to be getting into in this episode, Faith, Radiance, and Beauty. And what does faith and spirituality have to do with beauty and radiance? We're going to get into it because the correlations and the connections you, you probably haven't maybe observed in your lifetime. However, having worked with thousands of clients since 2011, I actually see that having a faith and spiritual practice is not only a key determinant of health, it does tend to lend to people looking better and being happier in general in their lives. So let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. We have Jamie Jamgushin joining us here. Good things are worth the wait. Just ask singer, songwriter, and worship leader Jamie Jamgushin. Waiting seems to be a perpetual theme for the 25-year music veteran, yet threads of persistence, determination, and perseverance are also woven throughout Jamie's remarkable story as she's navigated not just the highs and lows of a challenging, ever-changing music industry, but also the peaks and valleys of life over the last two plus decades. Her valuable experience and hard-won perspective all culminate in her latest project, Sacred Surrender, an album she never expected to make. Jamie's a classically trained pianist and vocalist who studied at Berklee College of Music, first honed her craft playing jazz and bars and on cruise ships, the first in her family to become a Christian. Jamie was saved at 21. She eventually helped her family find the Lord and began using her musical gifts to serve the local church. Still in the infancy of her faith, the Boston native signed a recording contract with Centricity Music that launched her career in Christian music and secured her a number one song with Hear My Worship. Since then, her life has had some unanticipated twists and turns, yet she never wavered in her faith. I have a track record with the Lord. JV insists, I've seen him to be good. So it's a truth that she's consistently reminded herself of as she continues to believe in the desires of the heart that she maybe hasn't yet received but will and it's a history she's had to rely on as she's battled health issues and overcome Lyme's disease and it's a faithful account she's had to review when her career has ebbed and flowed because of this and we're going to be talking about in today's episode really how we can balance and especially as women when to push, and then also when to retreat and take a breath instead of pushing through and working like a man, which is sure to age you really quick, put you in adrenal fatigue, and ruin your relationships. So we're really excited to have Jamie here on the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you today, Jamie? Oh, Rachel, this is such a treat to be with you. We've talked about this for a while now. So I am honored to be on your podcast and see your beautiful smile today. Lovely. Well, thank you for those kind words. Um, I've really wanted to connect with you and have you on the show for some time because I've been so impressed with your resilience. Overcoming limes is no small feat. You have had the opportunity to work with some of my colleagues at Innovative Medicine on the East Coast um, through a good friend, Casper Schultz, who's been on the show. And it's just really great to see people like yourself who've overcome obstacles, right? Things like Lyme's disease puts you on, on, you can't do anything at certain times. Like you're just flat out wiped out. And I just have no idea what that's like aside from Herxheimer's. I had that for two days after doing a detox. Like, this must be sort of what Lyme's is like. I literally couldn't move for two days. <laughs> 
So how did you do it? How did you stay on track with doing what lights you up, creating beautiful Christian country music amidst the health stuff? How did you balance it? Because this, this episode is all about faith, radiance, and beauty. And of course, that comes through balance. So what tips do you have for balance for us? Absolutely. Well, for me, this crazy journey of faith and really doing what I've loved since I was a young girl, I think purpose is what has driven me. Um, even before I met the Lord, I just knew I would be involved in some kind of music at a very young age. It came very natural to sit behind the piano and play. And I think it's such a gift from God when we find our work and our passions collide. I think that's where true purpose really comes in. So even as a young child doing all the classical recitals and then getting into my dream music school, with every kind of dip health-wise, my purpose is what pushed me to keep going. And that, Rachel, is what really helped me when I did, I say, when I crashed and burned in 2019 with Lyme disease, I was thriving. I was working at a beautiful church um, plant here in Nashville that we went through 10 people in a basement to thousands in a beautiful building every week, just seeing God meet young people in a special way and loved that job, was touring, doing music still and I'll never forget when I woke up with the kind of headache that you talked about the Herxheimer reaction. I couldn't lift my head off the pillow, couldn't move. Everything felt wrong. (laughs) And I'm a bubbly, upbeat person, and this was not me. And that began my long journey of really finally finding a place that could help me not just put Band-Aid, like, try this, try that, take this up, really get to the root of why my body was shutting down emotionally, physically, even spiritually. I have had a strong faith in the Lord since you mentioned 21, but making sure things in that area of my life were aligned. And um, it really has been the, the cliche answer. It really has been my faith and perseverance on the darkest of days to ask God to be my strength to get through Um, When I'm on the mountaintop and receiving accolades or when I feel like, wow, my body is so full of inflammation. I'm even looking at myself now going, oh, that dairy this weekend. You know, I still have things that affect me that I should be more careful with. (laughs) But what pushes me through is knowing my purpose and knowing God has, for whatever reason, put some songs in my heart. And I don't know why he still allows me to get them out there but he has up until this point, until a season change comes. And um, I think when you can put your passions and your work together and really find your purpose, no matter how you feel, you will radiate some kind of joy, some kind of beauty. And um, I know for me, that really does come from our relationship uh, with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing your experience of being transparent. So when people go through ups and downs, peaks and valleys. What do a lot of people do? Especially over the last couple of years, they might go to drugs and alcohol, addiction, distraction. Let's Netflix and chill. Let's binge watch something, right? Listening also to music that really isn't high vibration at all. And if you actually listen to the words in a lot of popular music, it's not talking about anything good that you want to have in your consciousness. So this is why we're bringing attention to this concept of faith, because instead of doing what the world tells you is normal to do, such as, you know, drink a bottle of wine, eat a box of chocolates, pop some ibuprofen, take something for this, that, the other thing, distract yourself with, you know, the latest thing online, Um, but really just praying and having faith in a higher power that's there to look out for you. It's like um, when we're a kid and we're saying, hey, dad, I need something. It's actually kind of like that. And you're not going to get that in a bottle of wine. So that's why, you know, this type of relationship, um, living your purpose, having faith in something is just straight up something I've seen in my most high vibe, beautiful, beautiful, radiant clients since 2011. It's just, I can't, refute that. It's a very common theme. So that's why I was sharing this. A question for you. How does your faith 
play a role in your radiance, but also when you're connecting with others. What are some of the things that you're identifying when you're thinking about someone who is radiant? Because I know you've been listening to the show and all the radiant stuff that you've learned here, which is great. But how do you use it in your life? Yeah, I love that. Um, you just hit the head on so many things. But I, I do believe true radiance does come from within out. And as a believer in Christ, I think that we get the joy of the Lord every day. And I think there's something about our countenance that looks different when I meet someone that has a relationship with God, even if they are going through cancer and in a really hard season, there's still a joy. There's a peace because they know their hope is in the Lord and they know he's going to carry them through even the darkest valley. So I find that radiance for me is on my days where I have filled my cup with what you just said. I've I've been in prayer. I've been in the word. I think the word of God, the Bible, uh, it talks about it will bring life to your bones. It will bring hope to your heart. I mean, there's countless scriptures about what where real hope comes from. So filling myself up daily with the word of God, you know, whether it's reading a psalm or a proverb, allowing those words of life to engage my spirit so that radiance, beauty can flow through. And then when I'm with someone, I think if you are already taking that time to fill yourself up with the Lord through prayer, meditation, Bible reading, I love to worship, to listen to great worship music. It just puts me in the best of moods, everything from rap to more classical, you know, then when you're with someone, you're not so self-focused that you can look them in the eyes. You can set, you might sense, I wonder how they're doing. You can ask them real questions. They might feel a, a warmth or a joy or a love from you, which we know is from the Lord. And I think that's where real radiance comes from, because now you're engaging with someone else's spirit. How are you doing? You're looking them in the eyes. How can I pray for you? Like what's going on in your life? And I think people are going to remember that more than the person that walked in looking like a 10 all the time, but had no joy or their spirit felt flat or they're just always searching and grabbing the next thing to try to find happiness. Um, you and I both know, and we've had successful careers, but no amount of wealth, no, no great perfect relationship, no perfect family, none of that can truly satisfy like a relationship with God. And I, I think people can feel that. I can sense that when I'm around somebody that is whole and complete in the Lord versus searching and trying to fill with everything else that brings uh, immediate satisfaction, but not eternal joy. Yeah, very well said. And, and also on the flip side, when some people just go like totally off the deep end with some of these very highly structured religions, right? So you can have one real type of practice. And then in that, there's all these different sects with different rules and um, things that are expected of you. So it's not about the religion component, just to be clear, it's about the relationship component. Absolutely. And I love to ask my clients what their spiritual practice is. And a lot of people have their own, um, you know, they might've come from a Christian Catholic background, um, but as they've they've gotten a little bit more mature. They're also encompassing different things. And when I look at Ayurveda and the definition of radiance in accordance with that, the radiant body is the 10th body with the body, mind, spirit, and energy being the first four bodies. And there's all these other qualities to us. So the body, mind, spirit, energy, I mean, that's going to be coming from a spiritual practice. So depending on how filled up all of those different cups and bodies are, that's going to have a direct relationship on the electromagnetic projection of your radiance. So if you're looking for some kind of way to structure this, uh, how does having a faith and spiritual practice make you more beautiful? It supports your radiance. I also want to talk about the fact that it says to wash your face in the Bible. <laughs> So, uh, cause you mentioned some scriptures. So let's, let's bring it in. Let's, I was at a church service the other day. I was like, where's the scripture? Come on, bring it on. Let's, let's tie it back. Shall we? So I'm just, I'm being funny. My great grandmother was the second ordained female evangelical minister in Canada. So, you know, I got the, the female pastor in my blood, 
So let's get into it. We have Matthew 6, 16, fasting to be seen, but only by God. So as a lot of you know, I did a long fast in the desert in Sedona in Southern Utah, completely changed my physiology. I share this journey, this hero's journey that I did in my audible radiance, the new skin science. So you being in the recording studio, you know what all that's like, Jamie, to have is like birth birthing something when you create a song or an audible or a book. And so anyway, it's talking about when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with the sad countenance, right? You're fasting, you're letting everybody know how miserable you look and feel. That's what he means. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. So basically, you're doing something hard for your body, you're going through it, still take care of yourself, anoint your head, put, get some, you know, moisturizer on there, wash your face, don't forget about your self care when you're going deep with the fasting stuff. Um, So that you do not appear to be to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So I love that. And you know, there's other scriptures where it talks about bones vibrating. Right. If you look at other ancient texts as well, you're going to see that there's evidence um, terminology for radiance, which is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that that comes down like, well, as a believer in Jesus, so I'm a Christian. I believe that the Lord's body was broken. Right. He went to the cross for us. He died for us so we could be forgiven. And even that depiction of his body being broken, his blood being poured out is for our healing is so that we could be whole. He was, he, he, he took the ultimate death for us. So he was broken so that we could walk in healing and in wholeness. And I love even picturing that. Um, I had to do a lot of the IVs at innovative medicine and I would always just picture, you know, God, if you took everything upon yourself for me, I want your perfect and whole blood now flowing through whatever had contaminated mine through that wretched disease, Lyme disease. And I think that is where faith and beauty and radiance kicks in, because if you don't have that belief system, whatever your belief system might be, for me, that's just personal. And I've had a very real encounter that I can't deny, right? So finding that thing that helps you overcome uh, daily. There's a scripture, you, you're getting my mind going. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, charm is deceptive. Beauty is fleeting. It's fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And Rachel, when I really think about some of the most beautiful women I know in my life, um, it's it's the wisdom they carry. It's the discernment they walk in. It's uh, the femininity and softness that they've garnered from a life spent loving the Lord. Um, There's a lot of different theories out there of how you can get there. But when I really find a woman in her 80s, her 90s, that's still what we're talking about radiating. It has so little to do with the outward. It's what she's cultivated internally. And that's my prayer for the younger generation, because I feel like that's gone. Like, you know, we're 24 seven scrolling now and on video games. And like you mentioned, Netflixing all day. And I fear like, what's going to happen to that generation? Or are are they going to be in their nineties, just walking around like zombies, you know? Well, it's up to us, right? You know, you and I creating the next generation. Mm -hmm. So when I, I connect with women who are moms, who are considering being moms And they're learning about this oxidative stress stuff. They're learning about non-toxic beauty, non-toxic products. And I just, it warms my heart that there is a generation of women like us, as well as men, 25% of listeners here on the show are men. So, you know, there's something for everybody in this episode, don't you worry. Um, It just warms my heart to see people that don't just look at the self-care and beauty stuff, biohacking, reducing oxidative stress just for them for looking good. It's everyone in their entire household is going to benefit. And when we're, you know, we, when we get a little bit deeper as to what's going on, all these things are simply distractions from faith and family. That's how I see it. So when we rein it back into what's important 
How do we have balance in our life? How do we live a life full of purpose and care for ourselves and really have this team when we need them, like for yourself getting through lines or also for your skin stuff? You know, you ring me up and I give you all the all the insights on that, which is great to keep you looking fabulous. But yeah, what you said about the 80 and 90 year olds, this is something I've really seen over the years. Very vibrant 80 and 90 year olds who still have so much to offer with their learned wisdom and they just have this warmth to them that radiance you can't actually rejuvenate there's no laser you can't just pay someone you know five grand hey make me radiant it does it doesn't work like that it's like when you're talking about the young woman who looks like a 10 but then opens her mouth and you're like oh there's not much going on up there <laughs> it kind of you know like you just said um Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting 100%. We don't want to be charming. We want to be radiant. We, we want to cause a little bit of a stir in a good way. Um, so let's get into your routine. So how do you stay radiant while on tour so often? Great question. Well, I listen to all of Rachel's tips and I buy these fun looking glasses like she has on right now. These have been a game changer um, in the airport, these Viva Rays. Um, I'm up late being on tour. Our concerts start at seven, they end at 10. We then greet people and sign books and CDs until 10.30. We're on the road at 11 in the hotel by midnight. So it's not a very healthy sleep schedule by any means. And I have found even putting my, my red ones on as soon as I get in the van or the bus um, at night helps tremendously for me to then wind down once I get to the hotel room and get, get some good sleep. Um, I've also, I carry a lot of the tips that you, you've taught me, Rachel, with my skincare routine. It's a non-negotiable for me. I will always wash my face at night. I have to wear makeup on, you know, I wear makeup on stage and as much as I want to just crawl into that bed. You wear my makeup too, everybody. I love it. <laughs> as much as I want to crawl into that bed, I know if I can wash my face and put some really good, clean, non-toxic moisturizer on, I'm going to wake up feeling and looking so much better the next morning. Of course, supplementation. Um, I would say, don't guess, test. What does your body need? And that's something the clinic I go to um, in New York has taught me. Um, you don't always have to be on a supplement forever. Does your body still need that? I'm on a whole new course right now, having just done a little tune-up um, of supplements that, you know, if your insides are healthy and you're detoxing, something I've struggled with and have to work on, um, getting my body to, to detox. So I do a lot of things to help that walking, Epsom salt baths, you know, you name it to kind of keep everything going. But the most important really is keeping my faith alive because I can keep up with all that other stuff. And if I am feeling flat um, spiritually or flat emotionally, there's no amount of, you know, sauna or whatever you want to do, that ice bath that can help me get my heart in the right place. That to me does come back to how am I doing? How am I doing with the Lord? How are my relationships? Is there anyone I need to forgive? Is there anything I need to surrender and let go of? And that's a big part of my practice for hopefully staying young and healthy and radiant um, is making sure that my spirit is clean. We all get hurt. We all have things that we don't understand. And so letting go quickly, forgiving quickly, if conversations need to be had, having those conversations um, that I think is a big part of biohacking and keeping your body and radiance clean <laughs> and healthy. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so well, there's a couple of really cool things that you touched on. Number one, purification, body, mind, spirit, energy, purification, right? You're cleaning out your blood, by the way, very interesting. Made some observations over the last little while that there is one group of people that primarily book consultations with me. Number one, intuitive empaths. And number two, yeah, I know you do. A specific blood type. I kid you not, a specific blood type. And the reason why I, I clued into this, because you're talking about food and IVs and supplements. And uh, I love to eat for my specific blood type. 
I mean, I'm not going to say publicly what it is, but let's just say everyone wants my blood. <laughs> and um, it's just really interesting to notice these things. Like number one, if people have a faith or spiritual practice, they're, they absolutely come across more beautiful, more radiant. And then the, the flatness also that you talk about is a key part in the rhythm that's also involved in being a woman, right? We have cycles. We can't work like a man. Like forget about this programming of women working like men. Sorry, not going to happen. You're going to probably die really young, like get cancer and be in adrenal fatigue and have terrible marriage. So forget that right now. If you're in the hypermasculine leader of the household, take a step back, pray about it and really be more in that feminine state. That right there is going to allow you to slow aging and look your best. So with this, the sleep schedule, with being as pure as possible, taking the right supplements, eating the right things for you, having some type of, of practice, the, the whole thing about the tune-up, the schedule, is that in my experience, I can really push through. And then what I need to do is completely retreat, hermit mode, and recharge my batteries. I will clear the deck because I don't want to have engagements with people. If I'm not at my best, if I'm flat energetically and emotionally, I just go within and I pray and I do a lot of self-care. So I'm curious if you're like that too, after you get on tour, um, what does your rest and recovery time look like? I know you just had a tune up at the clinic, uh, but just curious because this is also relevant to help us overcome stressful times in our lives if we're wanting to do rejuvenation, how to prepare for that. Um, so curious what your R&R and your tune-up sort of looks like after you complete a long tour. Well, I call it the tour slump. So after being on the road, September, October, November, you're pouring out. And in my field of music, there's a lot of ministry that goes along with more than just up there singing and playing a song. And so I'm pretty spent. So I do what you do, Rachel. I take a good chunk of time and I block my calendar and I just make sure I'm doing things that fill me back up. I'm getting with friends again, community, loved ones, people that I don't need to be on for because there's an element of being on when you're on tour. And I can just be me with my hair in a bun and no makeup on. And for one of my favorite things, and people know me if you follow me on Instagram, are my sunset walks. I try to get one in every day. It relaxes me. It gets my lymph system going. It's a good exercise, but it's not going to push me into adrenal fatigue. I'm at an age where things are changing a little bit uh, hormonally, and I don't need to be doing things that are going to be too strenuous, but I still need to stay active and be moving. And so sunset walks, bike rides. Um, community, healthy food. The first thing I do when I get back is I go to my favorite health store. I fill up the cart. I cannot wait to start eating organic again with no seed oils. It's very hard to keep that going on the road. Um, I feel best on a gluten-free, dairy-free diet. So when I get back, I'm right back on there trying to take those tour pounds off. <laughs> and I find if I stay in a healthy cycle, that will happen. But if I stay up late and continue on this, it, I, I go down pretty quick. So I have to be very disciplined and get back on um, a good health regimen, wake up earlier, go to bed earlier, hydrate properly, all the things that your listeners hear you talk about. But I think the bigger component is then just getting back into community getting back into church, getting back into, I have a beautiful prayer group, some small groups, a dinner club, a book club, you know, things that bring you life. Um, I think that's where the real living comes in for me is just getting around. I'm one of those ambiverts. So I need that time to be introverted and retreat, but then I need people. So getting around people again brings life. Thanks for your transparency. This is actually a big concern of clients that I meet with. They're like, I want to go out and be social. However, I don't want to be consuming seed oils. Then they actually get a little bit stressed out about it because they're doing such a good job looking after themselves. Here's what you do. You find restaurants that serve reverse osmosis water. 
You find restaurants that don't use toxic seed oils. Mm -hmm. They are everywhere these days, especially if you're in kind of like a more health conscious kind of place, which is why I really love um, the South Florida area, Palm Beach Gardens, PGA National, Jupiter. Love, love, love being there. It just makes me feel so good. And there's so many great food options. Um, but it, yeah, it's a little tricky when you take such good care of yourself all the time and then you're pushing to basically complete something that's a part of your purpose. And I mean, yeah, singing on stage, you're holding space. Um, this is ministry and there's a lot of emotions. There's a lot that gets released. So not only are you expending your voice to share and support and help lead people, but people are also going through things um, with the music and the words and the messages that you're sharing and you're holding that. And uh, so it's really good to practice clearing your energy afterwards and, you know, those ionic salt baths, love salt baths and certain technologies as well can, can help us. Um, but this is just what you talked about, this tune up approach. I'd say regardless of what's going on in your life, do this every quarter, which is going to include something like a parasite cleanse. And I do it every 21 days, to be totally honest with you. Yeah, but I'm no just matter that next week, actually, a, a parasite, a certain one through the clinic, some pills. Have fun. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have fun. But, but this gets back to being pure, right? So the more pure we are, body, mind, spirit, energy, you clear out those parasites from your central nervous system, your gut, you're going to have better skin, you're going to have better hair, you'll have better cognition. Um, but when you are detoxing, you're going to have a little bit of brain fog. Hopefully you don't get Herxheimer's, but just go easy on yourself. Be gentle. And then when you see yourself passing those parasites, you'll be like, goodness gracious, get those out of me. I'm so glad they're gone. And then you get really motivated to keep your body as pure as possible, not only energetically, but also parasites, right? Mm -hmm. So then, then you have the negative thought forms. This is also why faith is so key so that you can better discern and determine if something, you know, is from God or if it's not from God and how to be able to turn that down pretty quick. Uh, you have a, what sounds like a great sense of community with your book club, friends, Bible studies. Uh, I've been able to create this as well uh, with the Bible study with ladies easily 20 years older than I am, which I love. And, you know, pickleball with, again, ladies much more wise than I am. Tennis ball pros, actually. They're, oh, my gosh. They can move. Um, so I like – what do you think about that? Having relationships and community with um, women, men and women, who are who are older than we are. Yeah, it's crucial. I mean, in, in my prayer group, I have someone who's close to 70 and someone who's probably 10 years younger than I am. And I, I like knowing that every week I'm going to get to see these same – seven women. You really get to know one another's lives and we have a purpose where they're praying um, for a certain thing. But I, I love that. And I love just knowing that I have it on the books. I clear my schedule. I think true friendship grows around that. You know, I'm one of those people. I, I know a lot of people. I love a lot of people, but then my, my inner circle is quite small just with what I do and knowing that I'm going to get to see those people. Um, brings joy. I think that we all need that, whether we're married, single, um, we need that community. And when you come around a like-minded group, um, there's something special with that. You don't need to pretend, you just be who you are. And um, it's life-giving. So I would encourage anyone that is feeling isolated. I think isolation is one of our current generation's biggest health deterrent is all the time spent alone at home on our devices and Netflix, like we shared, I really believe that that's what's making people sick and stealing the life and joy and radiance. Um, people don't go out as much anymore and, you know, bring community together. So I'm all about bringing people together. I mean, you want a good charcuterie board, come to my house, you know, <laughs> we're going to put that together and just sit around and talk and eat and laugh and maybe cry and, and be together. Um, there's there's a scripture that talks about that God commands a blessing where there's unity. So if you can find some people you're in unity with, um, you will feel blessed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, having our community, the, the bigger our community is, the better chance we have at surviving. Mm -hmm. 
right? And in order to form that community, we got to have the confidence to do so. Right words to say, how do you know, look good and not smell bad and present yourself well. And so that we can do these things. And they're so key because absolutely we're not meant to be isolated. That's terrible for a nervous system. Um, however, sometimes having that alone time is one of the best things that you can do. So it's, it's just really all about balance. Mm -hmm. So love that you mentioned that. Do you have, um, you know, any interesting words that have come up that you'd like to share? Ooh, well, I have a new song out um, called Visions, and it, it actually takes me back 25 years ago when I was a new believer and got to go to the Philippines and um, some friends wrote it. I got to help rewrite it. And it's this whole concept of people coming back to their roots, people coming back to faith, people coming back to God, really. It's a, it's a song about revival and it's truly a surrender song. The chorus lyrics are, take my life, I'm giving it all to you. Whatever you want me to do, I will follow you. And it's this beautiful picture of laying down what we want, our desires, our dreams, and entrusting that to a good God who loves us and is only for us. And his plans are so much better anyways than our plans. So the, the words on my heart would be not just surrender, because that's thrown around all the time, but a sacred surrender. It's going to cost you something. It's holy. It's it's wrapped up in your faith and your relationship with the Lord. And what I've learned is there's a scripture, and I have seen this time and time again, there is no good thing that he will withhold from those who walk uprightly. So as we're doing our best to live in this world with love and joy and peace and follow God and walk uprightly, I think that's where the blessing comes in. And even in a bad day, in a bad season, you still have hope and you still have fulfillment. This is everything my book is on, P.S. Like you still have joy. And um, that's the word on my heart is that we would have some holy surrenders this year, some sacred surrenders and watch what God does. I, I have seen time and time again, anytime I feel like I'm having to lay something down, God only brings something better back around because that's just how good he is or a season change that feels hard at the time. It's because there is something better in store. Um, so that's my prayer, I think, for 2024, for people that would get back to the foundation of serving God. I mean, I feel like our world is is really gone cray cray in a lot of ways. And I think we need that. I think we need people to come back to faith or maybe if they've never been around faith to ask questions and try and see what happens. You know, I've never met someone that's truly encountered the love of Jesus whose life has not changed. Um, not once. So uh, that's my prayer that the song visions is, is kind of the echo, I guess, of my heart in this season that we would the first line, I see a vision of a generation coming back to you. And that would see that happen if that's the Lord's will. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. So be sure to check out her new song, Visions. Love this element of surrender. This is a very feminine quality. Mm. So when women feel safe enough to surrender, that's when our nervous system turns into honey. And, you know, speaking of new seasons, for, for those of you listening, I've basically changed my entire life up in a pretty short period of time. Um, and that wasn't easy <laughs> to say the least. So thank you everyone for your ongoing support, trust, patience. Um, but really it's, it's the faith and family and it's not trying. I like to, you know, focus on linguistics and things like that. Our word choice is everything. So I don't try, but what I really encourage you all to do is to just remember that there's a lot of distractions out there. We're told what the ideal beauty, beautiful face looks like the, you know, ideal, beautiful body. Hello, this changes every five to 10 years. Um, focusing on faith in family are, I think the best, some of the best things that you can do alongside, look at it like your, your self-care routine, right? You're going to be purifying your water, you're purifying your air, reducing your electromagnetics, 
will also purify what you hear and what you watch and what you allow to be around you in your home. And for those of you who are kids who have children, really pay attention to this as well with maybe music that you're playing in the car, maybe play Jamie's music in the car instead, right? Uh, I really mean that because I think a lot of people are really on autopilot. They're just doing the best that they can. They're barely surviving. They're isolated. They're overworked. They're tired. They're stressed out. They're scared, right? What's the next thing that's going to happen on planet Earth? Put your head in the sand a little bit. (laughs) Be in those positive emotional states no matter what. You can catch up on the news another day. You don't need to always be aware of what's going on everywhere all the time. I just see so many people struggling with this. So I just wanted to mention that, that that news is still going to be there. (laughs) I always share, I love that you said that. I always share, I have people that I just, I relax when I, you know, just binge watch Netflix. So you know what I say now? Okay, great. Go binge the chosen. At least you're putting something in you that's going to be edifying. It's the most beautiful depiction of everything we're talking about, this life of faith, the gospel, who Jesus really is, having a relationship versus religion. And I'll have people come back to me and say, ah, first two episodes, I thought that Jamie girl is crazy, but they'll watch the whole season. Don't quote me if it's Netflix or another one of those streaming platforms. I don't know. But they will come back and say, you know what? I actually felt filled up instead of depleted. Um, so, you know, you just meet people where they're at, you know, whatever, wherever they're at and kind of get them. That's how I find it. Get them in the door, um, whether it be with diet, you know, if they're not going to give up bread, get them some good homemade sourdough. Start there, you know. <laughs> hey, you're absolutely right. So when it comes to faith, radiance, beauty, biohacking, all these things, really what I encourage you all to do is to live and lead by example. It's not your job to be the preacher from the soapbox, giving everybody the, you know, fire hose overview of reducing oxidative stress. Like I, you know, slowly drip into your consciousness here on the show, (laughs) but yes, you know, present a loaf of bread. That's sourdough, something like that, you know, present a beautiful superfood adaptogen juice instead of a bottle of wine or something like that. I know I'm being funny. Um, I like the funny side of Rachel. Oh, I hold back. (laughs) I'm, I'm actually quite the jokester. Quite the little jokester. It's actually part of my personality archetype. It's what makes me a good presenter. Mm. And you probably are this very similar personality archetype to me too. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have you do a test. It's part of the it's part of um, the school of radiance membership, mm. so that when we understand our operating system better. Uh, it will also allow us to interpret others so that we can meet them where they're at and effectively communicate with them. So one of the issues that I had for so long was I was actually operating in the wrong personality archetype. I was operating more as a warrior because I didn't feel safe. Mm. And that also put me more into the masculine. So there's a lot to this with operating You know, God works in patterns. He works in systems. That's the beauty of it, right? So there are patterns to our blood types, to our neurotransmitter predisposition, all of these things, Um, the way that we operate. And when you learn more about it, you just, you see the beauty in the patterns and how you can best show up and be in your purpose with these really cool skills in your back pocket that forget it. I'm not talking about publicly because I don't really want you to know that I know these things about you. (laughs) I'm willing to teach it in the membership because it is life changing. I love that. Are you an ENFP, Rachel? Um, actually I've switched. I was an I N T J. I can see that. And then I went to an E, mm-hmm. which is interesting. So it was like the um the protector and then the Mother Teresa. So I shifted. I, I took the test a couple years apart, but this other test that I'm talking about, it's uh totally different. Okay. I'd love to get my hands on that. Yeah. So that's Myers-Briggs that you're talking about. Yes. Everyone in the School of Radiance membership, I have them take this personality archetype Ooh, so no. that I can, this quiz and their partner so that I can best serve them. Yeah. Right. So 
when I jump on a call, like a one-on-one call, I'll figure out pretty quickly what their personality type is so that I can better help them and serve them and kind of shift, shift my process. I learned that as a nurse to kind of read the room and be able to shift those dynamics so that I can provide the highest level of care possible. So anyways, that's on a whole other tangent, but really fun stuff to cover. Love this concept of faith and spirituality for radiance. It's a key component Mm -hmm. and the beauty is simply going to be a byproduct of that. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much, Jamie, for being on the show. Uh, Where can people find you? Where can they pre, you know, pre-order your book, get your music? Yeah. So I think the best place is on on any social Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's just Jamie Jamgosian. You'll have to look in the notes to spell that one. (laughs) And then Spotify, Pandora, wherever you listen to music, Apple Music, iTunes. The book is not out yet, but hopefully that will be be next. This new album comes out in March. So we're just dropping singles until March. And then the full album, Sacred Surrender, will be out March 22nd. So I'd love it if you'd stream it and share it with your friends. And hopefully it'll bring your heart peace and joy and Um, I'm real excited about these songs, but what an honor to be on your show, Rachel. I just love what you're doing. I love the radiance that you carry, the joy that you carry. And thanks for letting me share little snippets of my heart with your listeners. Of course. Let me know if you need me to um, help proofread your book. I'm a huge nerd. Um, And, you know, if you need a foreword, let me know. (laughs) I love what you're doing, Jamie. Your work is lighting up people's lives when you're on tour. You're really helping facilitate these beautiful experiences and exchanges. And so everybody who's tuned in, be sure to check out the show notes of this episode. Learn more over at theschoolofradiance.com. And I warmly invite you to book a one-on-one session for customized skin guidance, which Jamie has done. Um, Did did it save you some time and money, Jamie? I loved it. Yeah. I mean, it was when I was changing my whole world after Lyme and just wanted to make sure I had already switched to clean products, but wanted to make sure I was using the best ones, even for stage. You've really helped me out with a few, you know, the products that I love to wear on the stage. And um, yeah, you've helped me out so, so much. Book book a consult with Rachel. <laughs> love it. Thank you. Um, yeah, learn more over at theschoolofradiance.com. Free 30-minute biohacking training over there too. Subscribe to the show. Share this episode with a friend or family member. Not a lot of people are really tying the whole beauty and faith and spirituality. So I'm really happy that you're here. And um, for that person in your life that could really benefit from a little positive boost, um, share this episode. So thank you so much, Jamie, for being on the show. Look forward to having you again soon. Come visit me in South Florida. Let's jam. I'll have my gifts and guitars. Let's uh, have some fun. We're going to make that happen in the new year for sure. (laughs) Love it. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Jamie.